Marriage counselors have read it. Have you ever straight up told a couple to give up on their marriage? If so what what happened? It is considered unethical for a marital therapist to advocate for a specific decision on marital status. Such decisions are only to be made by the couple. There are certain situations where you may need to facilitate a conversation between partners about their marital status, but the decisions are always this. Not a counselor, but my friend told me that he and his wife were in counseling, and the counselor asked to meet with him privately, and told him that there was nothing wrong on his part, he was doing everything he should have been doing, and needed to do, and that if his wife wasn't going to change, nothing would get better. So I suppose he didn't straight up tell him to give up, but he implied it, and let him make his own choice from there. This will probably be buried, but after two and one half sessions an MC told me to end it. Ex-wife is bipolar, and would completely lose it every three to six months, diagnosed just after we were married. After three years of suicide attempts and affairs on her side, I left and agreed to 12 sessions of MC before filing. First two sessions are rocky but okay, then in the third she claimed that her infidelity was because I didn't make enough time for her. The counselor asked me how I spend my time, and I pulled my calendar 6, 7 morning routine, 8 to 5 work, 5.30 to 6.30 exercise, pick up food, go home and make us dinner, spend evening with her, repeat. MC asked her what was unreasonable about that, and she stood up, screamed at MC you're supposed to be on my side, and walked out. I apologized to MC, and get my wallet out, to pay for the session. He said he isn't charging me, but is going to cancel all future appointments, you're young, end this now, and don't luck back. Knowing that even MCS wanted us to fail completely reunited us as a couple and we've been happily married over 15 years now. Kidding, I took MCS advice and ran out of that tire fire of marriage as quickly as I could. <laughs> marriage counselors are a bit like vets. In both jobs the motivation is to heal and give comfort to those who are suffering, but unfortunately in both jobs the patient, animal or relationship, cannot be saved, and euthanasia is required. It can be very dispiriting for vets to be putting animals down most days of the week, and very dispiriting for counselors to see many of their clients headed for the divorce court. Because nearly all couples struggle along for years, before they seek help, it is very often too late by the time the first appointment is made. Three things kill a marriage, unmet needs, unacceptable behavior, and the damage that accumulates when the first two go unresolved. Most people think of unacceptable behavior when they think of marriage breakdown, violence, infidelity, alcoholism, gambling and on. In reality it's rare for a relationship to fail for these reasons. They are more often the result of relationship breakdown not the cause. Unmet needs are a bigger relationship killer. They are easily overlooked, often the partner who feels neglected will withdraw rather than lash out. Typically the wife feels emotionally hurt and doesn't want sex without love. The husband responds with more emotional coldness because he does not feel affectionate toward this woman who's rejecting him. It might irritate some readers that I give this example. The great majority of relationship breakdowns are a variation on three or four basic themes. The example above is very common. But it's the third factor, accumulating damage, that's the real killer. Whether through unmet needs, or unacceptable behavior stress builds within, and between the partners, inevitably it breaks through. It might be just a catty remark, a cruel laugh, or it might be a screamed insult, the effect is the same. Each time this happens another little piece falls off the foundation of the relationship. It is the accumulation of all these little moments, that really kills a marriage stone dead. By the time most couples actually sit down with a counselor the accumulation of emotional damage is so great it's very often too late. Never tell them straight up, but a counselor may objectively lay concerns on the table. It works both ways in the sense that we don't advocate for couples to break up, just as much for couples to stay together. In short, a counselor's responsibility is to use questions to generate thought and insight into our clients' perceived problems, in part for the sake of collaborating on goals that are most congruent to areas that the client identifies objectively for their personal growth. As your question suggests, ultimately projecting onto a client or a couple as to what they should do defeats the purpose of counseling and can often be a telltale sign of incompetence. My marriage counselor pretty much did. 
my ex-wife, we were trying to work through things, was a compulsive liar. She lied about anything and everything, from whether or not she checked the mail, to paying bills, to being pregnant, she wasn't. Twice. After several sessions the counselor is seeing the extent of her lies. Her lying to her and new lies after the last session. Her exact words were in the session, that stood out the most I have no idea why he's even still with you, if it was me I would have been gone a long time ago. My job is not to save your marriage, or tell you to get divorced, it's to help you both come to a decision on where you want your marriage, to go and help you both with that direction. I'm much happier now. Remarried to someone I trust 100%. I did know a church's mandatory premarital counselor who gave the prospective couple Mears Briggs personality inventory tests, and then warned them, if they came up as incompatible, although did not specifically tell them to not marry. Of course, the MP is of dubious value, and it is not clear that any results actually indicate future trouble. So it was probably not a great experience for the couple. A friend of mine is in couples counseling right now. Or I guess I should say he was. They went into the first meeting, and after talking for all of 5 minutes the counselor said it would be their only session, and that they weren't a couple just two people trying to co-parent their daughter. <laughs> Obligatory not a counselor. After my mom's second hospitalization for suicidal ideation, her psychiatrist laid it out for her. Essentially she said your husband doesn't believe that he has any problems, and blames everything on you. He is a narcissist who will never change, and I'm not going to waste my time on marriage counseling. It's up to you, if you want to stay. They got divorced. That was in 1993. My dad still refuses to believe that he has any mental health problems. I've been no contact for about 3 years now. Best decision I ever made. I'm not a counselor, but I was on the receiving end. My ex-husband and I went through months of counseling, and he would cry, and say he was willing willing to do what was suggested, and week after week we would go back, and he would give every excuse in the book for not trying what he said he would. After about 7 months of this, we went to an appointment and the therapist was done. He looked at me, and said you need to run and run far. He's a waste of your time and you'll always be hurt if you stay. It's not my job, to tell you to get divorced. I'm being paid to help but I can't help him. I can help you by telling you to divorce him and I did. And I continued going to this therapist until I was good. One visit he told me my ex tried to continue to see him and he said he couldn't because of a conflict of interest. This therapist, he was worth every penny. Honesty goes a long way. Not a marriage counselor, but my friend went to several as she is going through a divorce. Her soon to be ex-husband suggested a marriage counselor and she decided to go. The first one they went to the ex had picked out, and he wasn't actually a marriage counselor, he was a preacher who was a big advocate of women being submissive to their husbands. So the preacher spent their session telling my friend she was a terrible human for, not just letting her husband beat her. My friend decided to try marriage counseling one more time, but she picked out the people. It was two people a man and woman. They listened to both of them, and the ex-husband started getting super creepy saying stuff, like you can't live without me. My friend had a panic attack, and got taken out by the female counselor, who told her she needs to go no contact with him, because of all the threatening thing he was saying and implying. I have a friend whose wife has debilitating paranoia. She thinks people are spying on her, taking her food, and trying to kill her. She has accused several of his friends and relatives of hitting on her, she is not much to look at. He begged her to go to counseling, but she refuses, saying everything is fine, so he goes alone. Both counselors told him to run, since people with this condition only deteriorate as they get older, and she has started to get violent. My parents went, and the counselor told my mom to bail. My dad is a drunk with Asperger's and a heavy case of a flunza. He got my mom pregnant without her consent on the fourth day of them knowing each other, and told her it was because he wanted to change his life. He didn't end up doing that, and invited his side piece to their wedding reception, while my mom was 5 months pregnant. He drove drunk with me in the car as an infant on more than one occasion. Not marriage counselor but aspiring. My couples therapy professor last semester didn't like him too much, said he had a couple come asking just to be assessed if they should get married or not. He wrote up an assessment saying no. They got married anyway. 
he didn't know end result. People do what they want at the end of the day. In future practice I like to say I'd only advocate for marriage dissolution slash breaking up in instances of abuse and even then that's circumstantial. Though there are some modalities slash frameworks of treatment that say, if there is ongoing abuse, ongoing cheating, or psychological impairment in at least one partner that would affect treatment, common one I hear being narcissism, you shouldn't take the couple, to begin with which I view as a subtle cue to the couple their relationship cannot be fixed, in other words, they should not be together. I'm an ex-pastor and still seem to be the sounding boast for a bunch of friends marital issues. In November last year, a friend told me that her and her husband had never had sex after 9 years of marriage and had been celibate before marriage. As much as I wished I could, I couldn't tell her to leave, unethical. She has separated from him now. I was actually part of the couple. After we saw our marriage counselor several times, he asked to talk to each of us separately. My wife talked to him first. When I went in, he told me that she had already found a lawyer and I'd better get one if I wanted to keep my kids because she was going to move out next week. He actually recommended a lawyer for me and I did get primary custody. I think he could tell that I was the only one trying to save the marriage. I don't think a counselor is supposed to give directions like that, but they can provide guidance for you to understand what you want. Case in point, after discovering my wife's affair I started MC immediately to try and fix things as I couldn't accept that this was happening to me. She had still been seeing the app. When I told the MC that it was really painful catching her still betraying me, he simply looked at her and asked why, are you even here? That was probably the best thing he could have said and the closest to telling us it isn't going to work. I needed that slap in the face to come back to reality. My husband is an LMFT, and I asked him this question. He said that he would never do this, and wasn't quite willing to say it would be unethical, but not best practice. He would tell a couple what he felt was necessary to keep their relationship alive slash make it healthy, and then they could reach their own conclusions about how willing they would be to do those things. If you think about this, it makes sense. Therapists don't tell you how to live your life or what you are capable of doing. They help you understand and point you in the direction of the work you need to do and you decide to do it or not. That being said, there is a type of therapy called crucible therapy which is specifically directed toward helping people reach conclusions about whether or not their partners help them grow as people. My husband doesn't do that type of therapy, but I'd wager that is the only type of therapist whose job it is to tell people they should give up or not as those who pursue it specifically are there to have that question answered. Previous marriage, counselor made a very indirect comment to me that I might do okay on my own and could find someone more sweeted to me. It was very offhand, indirect, but I heard it. I know this post is directed to counselors, but I thought this might be relevant. I'm actually now with someone who is very well sweeted to me. From the time comment was made to actual divorce from that guy was many years.